presented by Tap Room. 74 Wyndham Street, the, the ultimate sporting hub. www.drinkfromthetap.co.nc The Sports Fan Network, The Sporting Lockdown with Dan McLeod and Eddie Lesker. The Sporting Lockdown, welcome in podcast time, you with Dan, if you're Red Scarf, what up Red Scarf? What's up, what's up? And we're joined by the ultimate rider, JB, how you doing? Hey, good, thanks guys, very well. Hey man, we're going to cover off a few things today, we're going to kick off in a little while, probably about an hour or so, with our UFC breakdown, introduction to a few more things, MMA with Sport and Brawl, but up until then we're going to talk some general sports stuff here with the boys, and you've got something on your mind, Etty, that you wanted to get off your chest about, I think, pro wrestling. Pro wrestling is real, and I don't care what anyone else thinks. I watch guys in tight underwear do some weird shit, but hey, it's real. Some it is real. In, in weird underwear, do some. <laughs> well, you know, like, sometimes they're wearing like bright colours, and I'm like, really? Why would you wear bright colours? You, do, you, you, do you find the bright colours actually force you to focus on their crotch? Wow. No. <laughs> no. Do you actually need uh, help focusing on your crotch? That's the question. Uh, the question is, it's Sunday and you guys need to change your life. <laughs> he's, he's actually not far wrong off that. Was, <laughs> right. we, church, exactly. Isn't church or something supposed to be on on a Sunday? <laughs> I don't know. It's sports lockdown time. You with Dan, Itty Red Scarf, JB the Ultimate Rider. Pro Wrestling. Hey, Royal Rumble coming up tomorrow. Who's your pick? Um, I'm going for Roman Reigns or Dolph Ziggler to take this out. You're not going to pick Daniel Bryan in there? No, no, no. I, I reckon um, he's just put on a bit too much weight. <laughs> yeah, he, he's looking a little bit chubby from when he when he first left. Oh, well, when, you know, when he got injured and everything. He almost broke his neck. Yeah, or, or whatever. Um, but yeah, he's put on a little bit of weight. And I, don't, uh, I, just, I think they need to build his character up a little bit more before they put him into the... Because they, they've already done the WrestleMania thing with him last year. Uh, even though WWE has done the whole repeat of, like, for example, John Cena, they made it, do, um, they made him do WrestleMania twice in a row with The Rock, which was really boring, to be honest. I, I thought it was really crap. So I, I don't think that they're going to put that same formula with Daniel Bryan again. Roman Reigns is a fresh face, you know. He's got the looks. He's got the, you know, he's almost like the new version of John Cena. All right, okay, I, I can accept that. He's almost got that undefeatable win from nowhere type of character, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, kind of like Goldberg when you know Goldberg was like a hundred and zero, and then the <clears throat> next week he was like two hundred and forty six and zero. Like, where did you do those other wrestling matches? <laughs> well, it's exactly what happened. That's why WCW ended up where it is, and WWE is where it is right now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, okay, so you've got there Roman Reigns or Dolph Ziggler. Tell me what about Dolph Ziggler it is that you like. I think in terms of a performer, he is one of the greatest um, performers out there uh, at the moment in the, in the WWE. He really sells uh, a move. Like, for example, when he gets kicked in the face, he does the whole backflip. He's, you know, he's like, ah, my face. Ah. We're, we're a lot of guys today, they don't really sell the moves. And if, if you can really sell a move, it really makes the whole flow of the match look really good. Okay. All right, then. JB, who are you picking for the... Oh, that's right. Now, you don't watch wrestling anymore, do you? You're like, a, I'm a real combat sports fan. <laughs> no, it's just... Um, yeah, I, I don't watch it anymore. Not not for any particular reason. Just um, just because I don't. You're just a because, hater. It's like You're just, just a hater. Just because I don't. <laughs> I mean, no reason. Just because I don't. Yeah. yeah. Well, who do you think is going to win out of uh, the Brock Lesnar, Seth Rollins, and uh, John Cena? Uh, I think they're going to give it to Cena. Yeah, yeah, I think it's looking like they're going to give it to Cena. I don't know. I, I think because uh, by the looks of things, Brock's going to re-sign with UFC. That's the rumor going around at the moment. So I, I think it's just a matter of time. It's going to be now. It's going to be WrestleMania. I think it's going to make a, um, a, a a character like Roman Reigns look a lot stronger if he can win it at Wrestle at WrestleMania. WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah. Um, off a guy like Brock Lesnar rather mm-hmm. than off say a John Cena dropping it or even. Yeah, I, I just can't see Seth Rollins ever picking up well, the belt. The strap. I, I actually see Brock Lesnar kind of turning babyface because Paul Heyman has been uh, buddy buddy with Seth Rollins in the last few weeks on the show. It does make sense that Paul Heyman will screw over Brock Lesnar like he's done with all his other past clients, you know? And then that would be a perfect way for Brock Lesnar just to kind of leave the company and, you know, hopefully pursue. Uh, uh, MMA career again. That'll also leave, I think, Brock Lesnar to an opportunity to come back maybe down the line as a, as a baby face, something like that, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah it leaves the door open for him, that's for sure. Yeah, because uh, how long can he realistically, JB, as you're our local combat MMA expert here, how long can he realistically fight 
in at UFC. That level? Yeah, I mean, if you if you honestly look at him and you and you think about um, what what his body's had to go through, not just yeah. as an MMA competitor, but as a as, as a, a pro wrestler. Well, you think the, I, I think I read somewhere that they reckon pro wrestlers' bodies get put through a lot more yeah. crap than what what a normal UFC fighter. How many fighter. times a week do they perform? You know, or uh, fight? six times. Yeah, so six you, times a week. You know, that's that's huge. And plus, they train on the side. I appreciate your correction to a fight to perform. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I apologise for that. All the wrestling fans out there, they definitely do put everything on the line, and um, the physical physicality is huge. Uh, in terms of Brock being back in the UFC, performing at that level, you know, physically he had no limitations other than his health. Uh, you know, the diverticulitis was a huge part of his UFC career, and um, I see the UFC basically buying his legacy, uh, which is what they've been doing recently to Anderson Silva, a couple of other stars. You know, they've given them huge contracts that they'll never fulfil. Sure, they could possibly do that with Brock, so he could be there as long as he wants, really. Didn't didn't Alistair call out Brock Lesnar uh, after his win over Stephen Shrew? Yeah, that's right, and also uh, Brendan Schaub. <laughs> what? Which, uh, yeah. Have you guys heard that? Have you guys heard the Joe Rogan podcast? Yeah, if with anyone's heard yeah, uh, Rogan uh, yeah. basically tearing him a new one, there. You know, it's not not like Rogan said anything. That and they're good friends true. too. They're good friends. Yeah, yeah. that's right. So that, that was huge. That made a lot of noise um, for a long time. But you know, Brock has everything he needs. It's just whether he can stay healthy and uh, whether the game has changed at, at all since he's been out of it. Okay. Well, uh, Sorry, go on. Yeah. Well, I, I think Brock. Was was good in the period that he was in, but now the fighters are just so much more advanced. I mean, there's such a huge gap between Cain Velasquez and the rest of the heavyweight division. Um, yep. You know, Junior Dos Santos is the closest thing to being able to beat him, and he got his ass whipped yep. for like 25 minutes. No, no, more than 25 minutes. He is very, um, Dos Santos is very one-dimensional, or he has been through the majority of his career. Mm. He even showed in his last fight against Stipe Miocic um, that he, he really hasn't added a lot to his um to his actual MMA game. It's Sunday afternoon or Sunday morning, almost afternoon. We're down here at the Tap Room, 74 Wyndham Street. If you want to have a place to come check out the UFC today, we're playing UFC Sweden. Say it, Itzy. Say the S word. Stockholm. Stockholm. Oh, yeah. Gustafsson right. versus Rumble, Rumble Johnson. It's going to be live here all afternoon, right up until 4 o'clock. Some great drink specials also going to be there. Hey, with the road to WrestleMania beginning with the Royal Rumble, yep. um, some of the other um, matches up that are coming up tomorrow, of course, the Usos will defend the WWE Tag Team Championship. Honestly, I have never been more pissed off than watching the Usos perform me. When they do, they come out and they do the Sivatao, which is, uh, you know, the Samoan uh, war dance. It is the most plastic remixed uh, version I've ever seen. And I feel like it just, you know, I just almost want to jab them. I wouldn't jab them because they'll probably beat me up. But... Yeah, you know they bring a lot of heat, and, and plus they're, they're wearing bright colours. How do the how do the Usos get, get the straps back? Because I mean, I I, yeah. I, 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 I I didn't watch a lot of WWE for probably last month while we we're getting um, some business stuff set up, and I I, 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 I literally Prison. was unaware that they had even won the title. Um, I think they defeated uh, the Miz and Miz though. I think which and I think that's going to be a much more interesting uh, storyline is watching the Miz and Miz though, um break up. A lot, of, you know, a lot of people. Sure, really, sure. A lot of people are really loving the uh, Mizdo. He's he's a real funny character, uh, especially how he's just doing all the. He, you know, he pretty much copies whatever the Miz does. So if the Miz gets thrown over the ropes, he'll run and jump himself over the and throw himself over the ropes. So it's the, the stunt double character he's doing. So you're picking the Miz and Mizdo over the Usos? Um, no, I'm, I'm actually pick, picking the Usos to win, and I'm picking the Miz and the Mizdo to. Uh, funny break up and yeah an interesting Royal Rumble card there's a lot of um, <clears throat> uh, and, and new introductions to the main card for a pay-per-view for the WWE the Ascension of course coming out of NXT debuted on WWE television about a month and a half ago they're taking on the veterans of New Age Outlaws Billy Gunn and Road Dog Jesse James more like the old ass outlaws because there's, <laughs> there's nothing New Age about them they look like they were the best back in the day it's, it's like watching your fer- your parents Friends like Russell is like man, you really? Billy Gunn looks like Magic Magic Mike, but Magic Mike at sixty five years old, and He's the little flabby and, and shit. The, and the Road Dog looks like the guy that like comes and checks our power meter here. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, the Road Dog doesn't even have his braids anymore. I think hair is just falling off his head. <laughs> it was from all those years of drug abuse. So you're picking the Ascension to go over the New Age Outlaws? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm picking them to the the Ascension. They they need a good rub, and um, you know what else? 
beating beating well, that's the your, that's the only reason that they're in there is up against the uh, the road dog and and Billy Gunners to get that rub. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, you got the New Day versus Tyson Kidd, Cesaro and Adam Rose. Who are you picking in that one? Um, I really hope that Cesaro and Tyson Kidd. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. yeah, I hope they won. And Have Adam I, Rose, the oh, is Adam Rose? It's a, it's a, it's a oh, three, yeah, it's a three-way. A, it's a really weird mix. It's your favorite type of match? <laughs> An all-guy <laughs> three-way. I, I really like uh, the dynamics of Cesaro and Tyson Kidd. I think they're really awesome together. They do a lot of um, old-school tag team moves that you know haven't been seen in a while, and they have really good chemistry. Adam Rose, I just think he he's popped too many pills in his time. Worst it? character, I think, in the history of professional wrestling, probably Adam Rose. Ooh. Up there with up there with the the, uh, the ghetto blaster. Oh yeah, um, remember what was the guy that uh, the Undertaker fought, and he wore the bodysuit that had the abs. <laughs> um, uh, oh. The Islander looking dude. No, John Gonzalez. No, John Gonzalez. Yeah, go, yeah, yeah. yeah. There you John go, David. Hey, what? what? <laughs> did, you, he look, did you say he looked like an Islander? He looked like an Islander. He didn't look like no Islander. He looked like he was from South America. I think he was. He from, looked like he was. He I had, think he's Maori. He looked like he had a gi- <laughs> gigant. He had gigantism from Brazil. That's he, what he, he looked was, like. And he had like this weird hair patch on his crotch. It's very it's similar to your hair patch. Like, it was like a uh, saber tooth from X Men. <laughs> yeah, except like the cheap version. Like, yeah, yeah. Was, except like they didn't have the budget, so they just put a suit on him and, <laughs> and glued some fur. Yeah, that, that was at the Las Vegas WrestleMania. I think WrestleMania Nine. Oh, I, I, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they, they, he was probably topless, and they went, wow, uh, we're going to put the suit on you because <laughs> you have a body of a woman. So no. You have the body of a 13-year-old girl. <laughs> oh, wow. It's yeah, the sporting lockdown. We're just previewing the Royal Rumble tomorrow, 2015, in the beginning to the road to WrestleMania. Um, we, yeah, sorry, you go. The, the New Day. Yeah. I hate that. Really? Yeah, it's really shit. I thought that they were going to bring back uh, like a nation of domination, like a, a very pro-black um, sort of movement. Like you know, uh, back in the days, nation of domination, they were they With were the rock, badass. Back yeah, in the day, rock With the rock, Maivir. Farouk, um, D'Lo Brown, Ahmed Johnson, uh, Mark Johnson. Henry, Mark Henry, yeah, yeah, yeah. world's Six strongest man, yeah, yeah, yeah. But legit, legit the world's strongest man too at one stage, was. yeah, Actually yeah. Was. But instead, they got these guys looking like they came out of the gospel, and they're doing like a hallelujah, hallelujah looking thing, and that you know they're wearing all blue and they're smiling, and it just looks really plastic. And did, did you see? Did you see the meme going around with a new member of the New Day, and it was Blue Tista? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember um, Batista came out and all the blue stuff and he got, he got ripped apart on the internet and they started calling him Blue Tista? Hmm. That's, that's basically what they did. Um, the, the female division tag, uh, tag team match, the Bella Twins versus Natalia and Paige. Oh, right. oh, I'm really liking the, the women's division at the moment, or sorry, the Divas division. Why is, is that? Because there's some, actually some really good performers in the, in the Divas division now. You know, is, there, is there certain moves that you're really liking? Well, I'll tell you one move I don't like, and that's the Bella Twins being involved in any angle in <laughs> WWE television. Because they are horrible in the ring. They're horrible backstage. They're horrible. Just, hap- just happens to be one's married to Daniel Bryan. The other one's dating uh, John, John Cena. John Cena, yeah, yeah. I actually um, I watched one of those as a Total, total Divas. Yeah, they, they, yeah. they have a, a program. And on the E channel. It's a, the, it's a, it is a legit... Ratings winner for the E channel as well. Yeah, yeah. No, it's. Um, I watch it and I just. I wonder what is going through John Cena and Daniel Bryan's head. Like, do they just? Like, I can tell you what's going. I can tell you right now what's going through their head. Naked, naked swapping, girls. swapping <laughs> wives. It's <laughs> exactly, and not like the way that Mick, uh, Rick Flair, and Mick, not the way like Rick Flair and Mick Foley did in that in that TV show. I'm talking like swapping wives <laughs> for other things. That's what they're thinking. That's the only thing. Because if let's think about it like this. If you were dating a twin, you'd be just curious what that other twin could do, wouldn't you? I refuse to answer that. No, question. no, you can answer it. Come on, <laughs> come on, come on. Get um, yeah, you know, but it depends. I mean, like, they kind of look alike. They kind of don't look alike. But, um, yeah, you know, the Bella twins are just, they suck in the ring, eh? I, I, like I, I hard do, out suck. I do like AJ, though. I, I reckon her's um, very, very good in the CM ring. Punk's got good taste. He does. In fact, we're going to talk about CM Punk a little bit later on anyway as yeah, well. And, yeah, Mr. And what, Phil what's, Brooks. What's going to happen? No, 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 he's CM Punk. He's still CM Punk. Is he, is he fighting a CM Punk? He's going to fight UFC? as CM Punk in the UFC. Is he really? Yeah, he is. That is crazy. That's that, a crazy. Chick, chick magnet, eh? So that's the CM. I, I get using his name to get the people in, but then to actually fight in the octagon, that would be one of the first, if not the first time, someone has just pure, purely used a, uh, a moniker. Yeah, but you've got to bear in mind, he, and he explained this in an interview a, a, a month or so ago, he's, he's been as a performer CM Punk from the time yeah, that he yeah. was 15 years old, you know? Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah, this is a moniker he's had for over 20 years now, so 
Yeah. You know, everyone knows him as CM Punk. No one knows him as Phil Brooks. He's become CM Punk. He embodies CM That's Punk. True. He is CM Punk, yeah, and, and he's actually he actually lives that um straight edge lifestyle. Yeah, man, totally. Yeah, no, yeah. no drinking, no yeah. drugs. No. So at least probably, he won't, probably won't, really boring sex too. <laughs> <laughs> at least he won't fail a what, cocaine test. What's his past like? You know, has he become a straight edge guy? No, nah, he's huge things in his nah, past. So what happened? His background is that he um uh, he came from a, an unloved childhood home, as they all do. As they, as they all right. do He started up a wrestling competition A uh, wrestling division in Chicago It was a backyard wrestling competition right, with right. his brother um, And it, was re- it became actually quite successful They were getting sort of four or five hundred people Coming to their backyard to watch these wrestling nice. matches And they were charging um, ten dollars per head Or five dollars per head or something yeah. to get in yeah. And then his brother ended up um, doing the dirty on him When it came to the money Wow! Oh, wow! So he, he and was, his, was his brother's name Garth Brooks? <laughs> it wasn't Garth <laughs> Okay <laughs> Just I, checking. I see what you did there. Yeah, yeah. You, it, like, you like that one? I, I, I saw, I saw the segue into that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, so that's sort of his background. He found he had really unsupportive parents, so he was sort of taken in by um, some friends and their family, and he grew up with them and spends Christmas with them, and those are his sisters now. And yeah, yeah. And, and he hasn't. He's, he hasn't. He's, he see. I think in his documentary he said he tried alcohol one time. And he didn't like it, and mm. so he, he, he met up with a whole bunch of punk rockers who lived sort of that straight edge lifestyle, and that's where that sort of yeah. grew from there. And so he's always been a very good performer. And um, we'll mm. talk more about uh, CM Punk in a little while in regards to his MMA career coming up. Yep. But but in regards to him as a WWE performer, missed on WWE television at the moment. Yeah. Really, really missed big time. Yeah. He was a good talker, good performer. He has huge mic skills, yeah, for sure. Oh, I mean, mate. that pipe bomb that pipe bomb that he did, the infamous pipe bomb, well, was so a, awesome. There was man. a series of different um, vignettes and a series of different sort of um, uh, uh, promos that he did out in the ring there, which were completely just... Mm. Off the cuff, you know, not 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 rehearsed that sort of thing, and he was—he's just amazing. He's incredible. Do you remember when uh, is it Joey Styles, the former announcer from ECW? Do you yeah. remember his last night uh, at WWE? No, and he he did, he did a bit of a, a pipe bomb himself, I... and and he goes off and he starts like you know, I want to call a wrestler and I want to talk about his wrestling moves rather than some stupid storyline. Da da da. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, so you you know, I mean, pipe bombs are not. They're not. He's not. To be fair, Joey Stoles. That was obvious. That was that was a um, that was a work. Oh, well, it was it was done very yeah, very it was, well. It was a work. He's, he still works for WWE. He, he's, yeah, he's he fine. runs WWE dot com. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so right. that's what Joey Stoles so does got now. An admin role. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, nice. he's he's literally yeah. He that, he runs WWE.com. Wow, that's so, huge. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a massive role a lot for him. More money. So. <laughs> yeah, a lot more money than being a part time announcer. <laughs> yeah, and that's yeah exactly. Gonna, uh, and let's not let, and let's not get shit twisted. There's a lot of money in WWE. Oh, oh yeah, huge. The wrestlers huge. aren't getting it though. If you have, a, but if you no, but you have a look at a wrestler like um, so so generally a, a top wrestler will be earning um, a late six figures, early seven figures. Yep. Is generally what the what they'll get. I think I think the Rock in his last comeback that was earning three million for that for that period that he came back for about three to six months. Wow! And he only wrestled contract? twice. No, he, times. he wrestled four times. I think or three times. Four was, times. Yeah. But Shit. but generally a, a wrestler like John Cena is earning sort of around one point six one point seven million dollars a year. Um, you're a real solid mid card wrestler is mm-hmm. earning sort of six hundred. Uh, Six hundred thousand dollars. So you compare Damn. that to what some UFC fighters get. Oh, that's money. You know, yeah, that, that, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and you think you think what the UFC fighters have to do? That's some real money that you're getting. Those you know, are, yeah, actually putting it the actual health on the line as well. That's one. That's the one. Yeah, but the WWE guys are performing much more. Yeah, yeah. The, the yeah, lifestyle is probably a, they're probably very rigorous. Both lifestyles, you know, in a similar way. Mm. Sure. We're down at the tap room Sunday afternoon. Good to have you here on the Sporting Lockdown. We got Sprawl and Brawl coming up in a little while with JB, the Ultimate Rider. We got some great drink specials. We got UFC on the television, so come down and have a bit of a watch. It's good times. And uh, we got some great drink specials: five dollar Heinekens, five dollar House Spirits, and five dollar. I'm missing something. Five dollar um, Woodstocks. That's yeah. right there. Thanks to our sponsor, the Tap Room, for hosting us today. It's what the noise you hear in the background. Yep. That is UFC Stockholm in the background there. Um, we haven't covered too much of it, but we're in the very, very early parts of the preliminary matches. So, continuing on with our road to WrestleMania and our yep. preview of the Royal Rumble tomorrow afternoon, coming out of the United States. Uh, and next match, obviously, is the main event: Brock Lesnar, the champion, versus John Cena and Seth Rollins. Itty. I'm I'm really bored of seeing John Cena and Brock Lesnar fight. I'm I'm so over. It's like the third time in a row that they've. they've it's had like to watching fight. John Cena Randy Orton again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, there's they've done all the moves that they're ever gonna do. What what is a new move that Brock is gonna bust out? I mean, it was cool when Brock first came back from uh, UFC, and he actually that was after after the WrestleMania in after Florida, Wrestle- wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And and he um, 
and he he legit he legit punched them in the mouth. The funniest part <laughs> was the funniest part was the crowd. The crowd already knew that Brock Lesnar was in the building. Yeah, and so yeah. they started chanting, "We want Brock, we want Brock." You know, mm, which was mm. who would have thought that that was ever going to happen? That was right out of left field at the time. Yeah, yeah, and their their first pay per view. This is how the internet has destroyed professional wrestling, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Well, and then the first first pay per view, um, the Extreme Rules. Lesnar takes down uh, John Cena and actually starts to elbow him for real. That they had to kind of stop the match because it looked like he had cut him in the head. And um, Cena wanted it though. Cena, Cena said they wanted oh, it, he had it as coming. real as possible. Yeah, I mean Cena had it coming. If I was Brock Lesnar, I'd elbow him in the balls most likely. But um, you know, I mean that was that was a that was a good that was a good pay per view. But then since then they've fought like what another three times, two times, three. Cena times? gets a really bad rap though. I feel I feel really sorry for Cena at times because. I mean, what, what, it's like Hogan. I mean, what, what's the guy doing other than carrying the company, selling a bulk load of merchandise? You yeah. Know? I mean, you're, you're talking about a guy who's probably the, the biggest earner in WWE history in regards mm. to merchandise. He's probably sold, he's probably sold more merchandise than, than Stone Cold and Hogan put together and The Rock, you know? Oh, that's a big claim, yeah. No, it's, it's, and I, and I, it's legitimate. This is, this is the impact that the PG era has had on professional wrestling. Yeah. It's in regards to their, 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 their buy rates and in regards to the money that they're making in merchandise. It's huge. Yeah, yeah. Grown men, grown men generally aren't, I mean, grown men, particularly 10 years ago during, or 15 years ago during the Attitude Era, Mm. A lot of grown men, like, say you a room of 10 grown men who are yeah. wrestling fans. Four of them are probably going to buy and walk around in merchandise. Yeah. You put a room of 10 kids, all 10 of them are going to wear the merchandise, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. And, they're selling, and they're selling the shirts for the same price sort of thing, so. Mm. But yeah, so um, so who are you picking in that one? And notice we, no one, we haven't even touched on Seth Rollins, yeah. who, um, who in some ways is the future of the WWE. Yeah, actually, I... You know, Sting has just recently come back, and, and I've, I was speaking with uh, one of my workmates, and I thought it would be really awesome because Sting is looking old. You know, he, he's not like Sting from what we all remember. He's Sting that's saggy and you know really shouldn't be wrestling a long, a long wrestling. So match be fair, the all. guy, the guy's in his fifties. He's in his fifties, yeah. So I, I don't think he should be like in a in a wrestling match. It's kind of like watching the Undertaker wrestle again. You're just like, yeah, you know. A little bit cringeworthy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you want to keep the memory that you have. But I, I think what would be really awesome if Sting decided to pass down the monkey of um, of Sting. Like, well, what's a monkey? What's a monkey? What's a monkey? Did you say the monkey? I said monkey, eh? Right? <laughs> what's a monkey? Oh, and my, and my mic's just playing up as soon as I fobbed out. What's a monkey? Did you just cut me out. I, I don't even know up. what a monkey is. You're getting censored. Yeah, I'm getting censored. I is that like he gets, gets given special gorilla powers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm talking about, God damn You it. mean the word Monica, is that right? Yeah, that word. Okay, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Monica. It's not your fault. I, 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 you know, this is probably the first time I've ever pronounced that word. So, Monica. Monica. Anyway, Monica. Getting, getting back to what I was talking <laughs> yeah, sorry. about. Um, I reckon it'll be cool if Sting passed down the Monica of Sting to someone else to carry on. So, almost similar to, you remember the Phantom, the cartoon with the guy in the, the purple yeah, yeah. The, in the jungle? He. Wasn't it wasn't the same phantom all, all the way through? He passed no, he passed right. it down. So it'll be cool if Sting passed it down to Seth Rollins because I really like Seth Rollins' uh, in ring abilities. I think he's really awesome. I mean, his he's high flying. Um, he's got good ground game, uh, and Dan just wrecks something. And um, yeah, so it's a good ground and pound. Is that what you said? No, uh, he's got, he's got he's got a, he's a really good wrestler. I'm not too sure if anyone can hear me right now, but um, here we go. Uh, yeah, so um, Seth Rollins he's he's really good, and so I, I reckon he would be a very dope Sting, especially if he came down from the rafters again oh, uh, with cool. a baseball bat, with the blonde hair, or still, but yeah, he's still going with, with the crow. Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird, eh? Yeah. That's the old school Sting. That's like the Stinger, the franchise from WCW. That's that's when he was that blonde haired Sting. Yeah, yeah. Well, Sting was never a good performer. I just want to like as a worker in the real. ring, he was mm. always pretty pretty his, terrible. Yeah. Just his in Scorpion uh, Deathlock is really shit. Too. Just in regards to your question uh, and your your statement about um, passing it down, that is the worst shit I've ever heard. Oh wow, <laughs> that is terrible. Wow, it should be. That passed. is the worst shit that I've ever it heard. It should be passed down. No, nah, it's terrible. Mm. 
why why do you Trick think your why do you think you should pass it down? Yeah. Like what what makes it a good idea? Well, because I, I because is things legacy really that great that you pass it down? Yeah, I, I, not I, not maybe his legacy, but the character. I, I really think that you can build on that kind of character. Um, obviously, they're not going to have another Undertaker sort of thing. Um, the streak they, they already broken. tried having two takers, I think. Yeah, and you know that storyline was pretty crap. But I, I think the character of thing can really go far if the WWE creative team really put their mind to it. But you know, to be honest, they have been leading me down, and leading a lot of like hardcore wrestling friends down uh, for a while now. So. Once again, it was just you know it's it's a fantasy. It most likely won't happen, but if it did happen, I know that there'll be one particular guy over there that will be very angry about this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you're pointing at me. I just think it's a dumb. I just think it's a dumb idea in general. Why, why do you think it's a dumb idea? I don't think the Sting has the lead, and I'm a Sting fan. I mean, I'm, people used to buy me Sting T-shirts for my birthday and stuff. But no. were you like Sting? His, leg- his legacy, his <laughs> legacy is not quite up to that level where you pass something down like that. You know. Do you, do you think there's anyone that has a legacy that can be passed down? <sighs> Rick Flair. Well, they, that, but that's the thing. That's how um, the actual the actual um, moniker of the Nature Boy was actually passed down them from Buddy Rogers. So that's actually a moniker that's been passed down through numerous wrestlers through the ages. I think that 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 tradition of doing that is, is finished now. I don't think you're going to see it anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't think if anyone was going to pass anything down, I think you'd probably be more likely to see an Undertaker type yeah. persona get carried get passed down to another like f- the r- dead another man wrestler. or something, will, something like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Do you think there's funny? Anyone? I watch I watch Bray Bray Wyatt and I see. Like, Undertaker like 1996 mannerisms? Undertaker in Bray Wyatt. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I, I think Bray Wyatt is actually one of the best characters out there at the moment. I, I wish he was getting a bigger push. Um, and I also wish he was finding the Undertaker. I actually think that would be a pretty cool um, angle to work um, in terms of... Because um, Bray Wyatt can obviously do a lot of the work um, where Undertaker can kind of, you know, leave on a good good note, but... Yeah, Bray Wyatt, he's awesome, man. Especially when he blows up the light and then he walks through and it's all candles and... Um, that definitely sounds like and shit. old school Taker to me. Yeah, yeah. It's a pretty scary character. But, uh, <laughs> this is a pretty scary so character. Like, you know, he's, so he's, a scary, he's a scary character for little kids. And so just, quick, good. Yeah. And so just quickly, <laughs> your pick for the Royal Rumble will be, you said, uh, Dolph Ziggler or, or, Ro- or Roman Wayans. Right. Roman Wayans. Wayans. Yeah, Wayans. <laughs> The, one Wayans. of the Wayans brothers, right? Yeah. So you got Marquis, no, so Damon. That, that's the Heineken answering. Keaton Ivory, uh, yeah, Heineken. You <laughs> said you said the Heineken, and, hey. and then this dude, right? Yeah, Roman Wayne. No, Roman Reigns. <laughs> <laughs> Twice. How about how about I how about I give him his Islander name? But I can't even pronounce it. And I'm sorry. His name is Sir Roman. <laughs> how about you just not drink anymore? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Who said to have a Heineken early in the morning? Not me. You did. It's quarter past that's twelve. Right. Welcome, man. You're listening to the Sporting Lockdown with Dan Itty Red Scarf, and of course JB the Ultimate. Right. Rider in from the Brawl and Sprawl. What? what? Yeah. Brawl and Sprawl. Hey, we've got some UFC going on down here at the Tap Room. Our sponsors for the podcast here. Tap Room 74 Wyndham Street is now the ultimate hub for all your sporting needs, particularly American sports. Lots of cool sporting memorabilia around here. We're sitting right next to a signed Tom Brady jersey from uh, uh, what Super Bowl is that? I can never read that Roman. That yeah, Roman yeah. Is that 17? No, no. It's, been, no, it's like it's 40. The L is a 4. 42, uh, I'm pretty yeah, sure 42. it is. 42. Is that yeah. 42, Nathan? That's before the L takes 10 off it. Is that, that's 42, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, we worked it out. That's Super Bowl 42. So come we around. Have to ask our local room. white guy. We, we, we have <laughs> we to. We've got to have one on staff. Yeah, absolutely. We just have to. Everyone, <laughs> everyone has a white guy on staff. That is how every single podcast show works. So we're going to talk a little bit in a while, some more sports. Um, just in regards, one more time, WWE Royal Rumble match tomorrow on pay-per-view, Sky Television. Um, who are you picking to be the special surprise entries? Not Chris Benoit. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Did I get... Uh, no, I, I, actually, I think it's been long enough. <laughs> yeah, you know, you can crack these jokes. Um, oh, man. I don't know who I really <laughs> want to see come back. So, you know, to I'd be, be really surprised if Chris Benoit came back. Imagine the pop that would get. Yeah, yeah. That would blow <laughs> the lid on Is Wrestling Real or not? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like The Walking Dead meets WWE. It'll be like the Tupac hologram. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know. Um, Who would you like to see come back if there was a... Uh, well, it will be, there will be a surprise entry as we're watching a, um, a vignette of um, Anthony Rumble Johnson in the background. Yeah. Who um, would you want to see come back if you could? Well, didn't you tell me that you wanted to see China come back? Yeah, I'd like to see China come back because wow. right. her porn is horrible. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> back to, the, back to China. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. I am. Um, I, 
I was, I was interested. <laughs> and honestly, most awkward boner ever. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, out of 10, what would you give it? A th- uh, two and a half. Oh, wow. I almost gave it a three. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Two, was, two is good enough for a boner for you. So <laughs> I'm kind of worried. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> yeah, but, um, uh, you know, in terms of um, surprise guests, you know, they're probably going to bring back Rob Van Dam. He, wow. he's, you know, Chris Jericho, you know, it's going to be the usual suspects. Those, 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 th- they don't count. So Chris Jericho is already active on the roster at the moment. So oh, is he? And so is right. Rob Van Dam. What about Booker T? Uh, Booker T, they had Booker T be a surprise entrant last year. He got knocked out straight away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, J- and JBL. So uh, they've changed Jerry. up the, um, the announcers again, haven't they? Uh, so it's, it's, so the King's now on, on SmackDown. Oh, is it? I haven't actually watched SmackDown. So the King's majors. on SmackDown. On Raw is uh, Michael Cole, JBL, and Booker T. Oh, okay. Wow. But the pay per view um, announcers will be the King, Michael Cole. You know that who they haven't changed in terms of the announced team is the Hispanic team. They look like the same motherfuckers from before, and I reckon they make the tables. And I reckon <laughs> <laughs> that's how they keep their that's jobs. That's a record. Yeah. That's a record. And I, you know, the funny thing is, I, I bet you they're not even broadcasting. They're just there to be there. <laughs> <laughs> There's some Spanish guys. <laughs> 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 is this thing even on? <laughs> they're like blood in, blood out. <laughs> yeah. They're just, they're just, they're just swearing in, in Spanish the whole time, aren't they? Um, okay, then. So, surprise people. I would, you know, who I'd love to see come back tomorrow, and I think would be really, really cool. Who's that? Chris Benoit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I would, I would, I would love, to, I would love to see Stone Cold do just like a run through. That'd be really cool. Uh, just that see, like, open glass. a can of whoop ass and then just eliminate himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah. you don't That'd want to see cool. him get eliminated. A couple of beers on the corner ropes. That's the one. Hey, uh, what's your thoughts on Rey Mysterio at the moment? Like, what, what do you want to see have happened with Rey Mysterio's career? Um, I he's been wrestling for ages now, eh? Because yeah. he hasn't even been wrestling since. Uh, Age of eighteen or seventeen, probably. And he's WCW, like, is he not? Is he not still day? seventeen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I I honestly hope he has one more wrestling match, and then that's it. I I don't want to see him in like prolong his career and and just you know he, he start to fade and you are watching him and the moves aren't yeah, as smooth sure. anymore. So uh, hopefully he gets one 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 last good match and then that's it. You know, retire. Yeah, I'm down with that. You know, I I think I think I'd like to see him. Um, I think he's going to move. I think the word is he's going to move on down to um uh, AAA, which is the the Mexican. Yeah, the big Mexican Mexican organization. What does so. AAA stand for? Arriba, <laughs> arriba, arriba. <laughs> arriba, arriba, yeah, arriba. Yeah, so wrong, eh? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that that is bordering on so many. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, my bad. Racially, I apologize, yeah. racially horrible lines. I I can't even begin yeah. to explain that. <laughs> Anyway, we're down at the tap room. It is a sporting lockdown. We hope you're having a good afternoon. We're going to talk a little bit more sport later on. Just very quickly before we move on to that, what sporting event other than MMA are you looking forward to coming up there, uh, Itty Red Scarf? Oh, man, Super Bowl. Super Bowl is yeah. coming up, and I can't wait. Even though my team is not in there, and they haven't been there for so long, it's, it's depressing. It is very depressing to be an Oakland Raiders fan. I it can, is so depressing. I can imagine how... I, I, I almost want to support netball or cricket. Support the Cleveland Browns. Support that I don't even you, watch. Uh, if you want to get pathetic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, you know, it's going to be the Patriots versus the Seattle Seahawks. That's it. Um, and I'm... Great prediction there, Nostradamus. <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah, you know, hey, very smart. Um, but I, I, re- I reckon the Seahawks are going to take it, eh? All right. All right. Yeah. All right, it's... That, that's sort of interesting on, on, on multiple levels. So, yeah. You're here with the Sporting Lockdown. We're going to talk some more sport, including our own little preview, building up the Super Bowl. We've got a lot more to talk about, the NBA. We're going to talk about the NRL 9s and, of course, the Cricket World Cup that's coming up very, very shortly. Loads of stuff here. Sporting Lockdown. It's coming up to 20 minutes past 12. UFC Sweden, UFC Stockholm. Gustafsson versus Rumble Johnson is going to be on down here at the tap room very, very shortly. We're going to be kicking the Sport and Brawl at 1 o'clock with JB, the Ultimate Rider, as well yep. as a couple of very, very special guests to talk in some UFC, combat sports, and all that action. This is the Sporting Lockdown. You have Dan, Itty Red Scarf. Here is Nas. Take a little break and we'll be back shortly. All right, welcome back. Sporting Lockdown, Dan, Itty Red Scarf, JB, the Ultimate Rider. Yep. What's up, everybody? Hope you're having a good Sunday afternoon. Welcome brought to you by the Tap Room. We're down at 74 Wyndham Street. Coming down, we've got UFC Stockholm on at the moment. It's going to be on until 4 o'clock. What's the main event today? Anthony Rumble Johnson versus... The mighty sweet Gustafsson. It's going to be a great match. We're going to talk more about that a little bit later in the Sprawl and Brawl podcast. We're going to welcome in our uh, our local white guy. Welcome in local white guy. Introduce yourself to the people, local white guy. 
Uh, I'm Nathan. Well, the <laughs> local white guy. You sound very, very, very uh, white. That sounded Nathan. very formal, eh? My he was like, Nathan? He's like, yeah, my, I'm like, introduce yourself. You're always like, hey there, my name's Nathan. And uh, <laughs> uh, to be honest, I like accounting and I like uh, croissants. You ever like to have a croissant in the morning? Croissant and coffee. It's very yum, very nice, very tasty. Uh, good way to treatment. start your day. Good, good, good way to start your day. Apparently, um, according to the people at the tap room, he's now the resident, the resident stud behind the bar. Yeah, uh, well, I've actually seen him pull a few girls. The Tahitian girls were all up on him, up on him last yeah, night. So. Yeah, oh, French like Tahitian that. girls. Bonjour, <laughs> bonjour. Um, yeah, yeah. Nathan, wee wee wee. It's the baby blue eyes. It's the baby, oh, and that's what she's going. She's going. Oh, he's got such beautiful eyes. Hey, not only has he got beautiful blue eyes, but he's also a super mad sports fan. What's your favourite sport? You reckon? Uh, I have to be basketball. Basketball. Nice. Wrong. Yeah, and your team is. Tell the people who your team is. Uh, I'm a minority here, but Dallas Mavericks. Dallas Mavericks. Nice. He's a minority. Man. Are you a minority because you're a Mavs fan? Are you a minority because you're a white guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that, that a double entendre? That yeah, yeah, yeah. Very well done. You're going to do well in, in podcast radio and all yep. that sort of thing. Okay, so we're going to touch on the NBA a little bit because I'm an NBA lifelong Los Angeles Lakers fan. Yep. Let's talk about Kobe Bryant for a second because Why not? Kobe the other day, very, very sad. Injuring his rotator cuff, and it's looking like it could be a season-ending injury, depending on the course of treatment which he takes. The question for you, Kobe takes surgery and ends his season. Is that the end of Kobe's career? Does he come back? Yes. JB? He, like, you know, it's not worth it unless he was coming back. Is his career, I mean, you're talking about probably one of the top five all-time yep. careers in the NBA. 100%. Maybe, I think, Nathan might put him in top ten. But I, I definitely he's a top he's a top five Hall of Famer in, in professional basketball. Yeah. Does Kobe Bryant, who's been probably the most dominant shooting guard since Michael Jordan and the second most dominant shooting guard of all time, is that the end? Does he want to go out like that, Nathan? I don't think so. I think it'd be similar to Charles Barkley, where you don't want to go out because of an injury. You want to go out on your own terms. Which yep. even if he comes back and he's he's not as productive as he's been this year. Which at times he's been great. Well, he was he was up until about I think the ninth round or, or, or so. Yeah. Actually, later than that, um, the fifteenth game or something. Like that, he was the scoring leader in the competition. Yeah, yeah. That's right. And I, I just I can't see him. He's he's like next to Jordan, probably the most competitive player to ever play. Oh, and you just can't sure. see him going out on a shoulder injury. Like it, it's for most people, it wouldn't be a career-ending injury. Um, his age obviously comes into it, and the amount of miles he's got, but. I see him coming back. I, I can't see Kobe going out on an injury. So it had been rumored, it had been rumored and going around that they were in, he was looking to possibly maybe not con- complete his contract at the end of the season. He was going to look at retiring. Does this really put the writing on the wall for him? Well, it, it could be, you know, is it going to be as Steve Nash 2 where uh, they lose someone at the end of their career on a lucrative contract? Um, because Kobe's on max, right? Yeah, he's, a, he's a, of course he's a max. Yeah. He's a max. So, twenty five next year. Yeah, so it's um, he definitely won't want to go out as Nate says, and um, it's just what can you do at that age? You, you got to get your shoulder sorted. I've I've had a rotator cuff injury myself, and it's it's shit. Um, but you know they, they got all the money and all the resources in the world in LA. And he's also undertaken some experimental uh, treatment in the past in order to ensure that whatever treatment he goes through holds out. I mean, his legs have looked in really good condition yep. this year, particularly his Achilles. He's looked great. I mean, you, I mean, for me, I'm, I'm I'm a Kobe Bryant fan. You know, I think Kobe is the, I think I think Kobe is the, for me, probably the, the second greatest of all time for me in, in my in my books. And that purely that's because I'm a, I'm a massive Lakers fan. Yeah, have been since '89. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't want to see him go out like that. I want to yeah. see Kobe come. I don't, I don't want to see Kobe win a, win a ring. You know, Kobe's won five rings. Yeah, but Kobe deserves to end on Kobe's terms and not to be sort of uh, dictated to by a uh, an, an, an injury and get told no, that's it, man, you're, you're done for. And I think because of his competitive nature and his competitive spirit, yeah, I've got a feeling that Kobe is going to be like he's going to come back. You know? the, the other thing that makes me think he'll come back is before the Achilles. Uh, injury, he kind of planned to go out on that last contract before he signed these last two years. Sure. So it's like he only came back because of that injury, and he wanted to go out and maybe beating Jordan's uh, scoring, like getting ahead of Jordan on that scoring list, may have contributed to it. But I can't see him going out on an injury after specifically not wanting to go out on an injury last time. 
Okay, so what does Cobra do? I mean, there's multiple treatment methods they're talking about. There's a whole lot of physio stuff. There's a whole lot. There's loads of different um, uh, treatment options. Does, does, does Kobe make sure he gets it right and end the season for him? I think if it's from uh, there was a video that came out last night, which was posted, um, and it was called okay, it was titled OK, and it was by Kobe, and it was him and the doctor explaining exactly what that had happened with the injury, and the doctor said that the third. Uh, one of the muscles in that group had been torn off the bone. Mm. So that tells me that's not going to heal probably without surgery. It's, yeah. it's definitely not going to be... If it is, it's going to be a really long heal without surgery. The Kobe tweet following the injury was pretty funny, though. It was. It was, it was, it was it, it sort of, and that's sort of the character that Kobe has become in the last sort of three to four or five years. Yeah. He's become a little bit more... Um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Almost laid back. PR savvy, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Um, laid back with the media. Laid back with um, social media and that sort of thing. And it was kind of a... He sort of touched on it because Kobe has been dishing the ball a lot like just yeah, recently. yeah. Like he had, what, a career-high 17. 17 dishes yeah. the other day, you know? I mean, that, that's unheard of for Kobe Bryant, um, <laughs> you know, but... All the memes about him not passing the ball. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly right. So, Kobe Bryant, what do you want? What, what would you like to see, JB, happy with Kobe? I would like him to have the surgery, rehab hard, come back next season, and uh, just do one full season, just play, play your heart out for the season. Because yeah. everyone, everyone will know that they'll be like, this is Kobe's last season. Yeah, that's right. This is it for Kobe. Like, just getting one, like, you know, three, four more of those classic matchups, you know, Kobe versus LeBron, Kobe versus Wade, XXX. Um, it would be good to, to see those matchups again when Kobe's fit, he's in a good frame of mind, and, you know, he's got nothing to lose. Sure thing. Another thing that happened earlier this week, in fact, uh, just, just yesterday, wasn't it? It was Clay it Thompson's was, yep. epic 52 point game Huge. for the Golden State Warriors, but more epic than anything else was a record 37 points in the third Massive. quarter. Clay Thompson. He is probably the most hot and cold player in, yeah. in, 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 the, in the Western Conference. We're talking about the yeah. dominant conference at the he moment. Is, yeah. He is so hot and cold. What did you make of the performance? It's just like to go 13 from 13, whether it's in a quarter or over the course of a game, is incredible. But to do it on nine of nine threes is what stood out most for me. Like t- To do that and just keep hitting them and they were all catch and shoot shots was just like you'd never seen anything like it before and he beat the record for most points in a quarter by five it wasn't like he just squeaked over either so like pretty incredible it was one of only I think four or five players to ever have 30 points in a quarter yep and you know one more three pointer and he would have had 40 which is incredible yep so the the record is 14 is it three pointers in a game yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. no 12 12 by Kobe and (laughs) J.R. Smith, who who equaled it last year? No, you got to talk into the used microphone. To, used uh, to play for yeah. the Raptors. You got it for the Raptors. He got twelve. No, he was never like a star player. No, uh, yeah, you're, you're you're definitely not like, narrowing it down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it <was> like <laughs> six years ago. All right, okay, then. So Clay, Clay Thompson, he, he had eleven on the yeah, game. Yeah, massive performance. Hey, very very cool vote in the um, the All Star ballot. Um, yep, Steph Curry. Yeah, more votes than LeBron James. That's huge. Huge, yeah. Let's be honest here. You either love LeBron James or you absolutely or you hate just hate this shit out of him. Yeah. And, and LeBron's had a pretty average season by his standard as He's well. He's had a pretty average two seasons, if, yeah. you, if you're honest. Yeah. And and he missed, I think it was nine games. Uh, uh, ten in a row, they lost nine. Yeah, and, and like, one. I mean, that that's going to go bode well for like how important he is to the team, how awful they did while he was gone, but... A lot of it big doesn't, changes. doesn't help the All Star voting when you miss that much time. So and that time of the season as well, you know, it was go time for All Star when he was yeah. out. And it's the exact reason that Kevin Durant missed out on a starting spot was just missed too many games. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I don't, don't know, know about, about that. KG. <laughs> here's the thing, though, because the All Star ballot is a, is a fan. It's a fan voting contest. Yeah. That's really what it is. True. I mean, Kobe Bryant missed. What eighty yep. percent of last season? <laughs> yeah, and still got voters. And then. still got voters as, yeah. as, as an all star starter. So how does that work? You know, yeah, yeah. well, you either love these guys. You, this, this, and this is what I keep saying to people. And I and I've had this conversation with Nathan before. 
<clears throat> and that is Kobe Bryant's legacy is what dictates where his position his, and, and the greatness of basketball players is. Yeah. When you have a player who doesn't play 80% of the season but still gets voted by the fans, the number one vote getter, I'm pretty sure, on the Western Conference yeah, as well last season, yep. you know, and gets named the All Star shooting guard because of that. Now you take Kevin Durant, who's a very popular player, probably, MVP. The, probably the best player in the, NBA, in the world. Of basketball today, yeah. yeah, you know more than I, I would. I would say that he's better. He's all around better player than LeBron James. Yeah, arguably. Yeah. Yet, KD misses out on a spot. Yeah. Anyway, he missed what fourteen games. Yeah. Yeah. And Doesn't make sense. It could just be whether it's like he might be less popular than kind of people realize. How did Tim, how did Tim Duncan go in the voting? Uh, I'm not sure. I think he was he was in the top five or six. Is he a fours. starter? No, no. That's interesting. No. Nah. You, you, and you rate him in the top five players of all time. I do. Yeah. But at the same time, the Spurs the, yeah, the yeah. Spurs have always had trouble with all-stars because they limit their guys' minutes so much and they're like such a team. Another, another thing you've got to look system at. system doesn't help the at, players. Yeah. But the other thing also All-Star. you have to look at, California is also the largest state exactly. in the United yeah. States. So it's, it's a big hu- thing. Huge market. That, and that's, a, that's number one reason why I, I think just recently the Los Angeles Lakers were named the richest sporting franchise yeah. in America. There was yeah. three, I think, NBA teams over $2 billion in valuation, Yeah, which is incredible because last year, this time last year, there was one. Yep. So there's a lot of teams gone up massively in value. Well, yeah. the Clippers proved their worth. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that one there. So, okay, so all-star ballot. I mean, another obviously very interesting talking point was who missed, Who else missed out? Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade. D-Wade. D-Wade missed out. But yeah. that, like, in some ways, that's not such a great surprise. D-Wade hasn't no, been D-Wade. He didn't deserve yeah. to be there, but on the same kind of thing as Kobe, where his, his legacy means you would have thought he would get in there but no yeah. the fact that you even contemplate putting Dwayne Wade in the <laughs> same legacy category as a Kobe Bryant as oh, a Michael he, Jordan he's not in that level but uh, uh, well then yeah I don't know if you're talking straight shoot guards I would put him in the conversation of the top three uh, yep mm. yep I think that's yeah, probably but if you're talking about legacies and who what were the greatest I wouldn't put him up who's there who's your top five shooting guards right now yeah uh that's hard. Shooting guard's one of the... <laughs> Most overpopulated uh, yeah. <laughs> classes there are. There's, there's not kind of huge standouts. There's, there's a lot of good ones. There's not a lot of great ones. I mean, Kobe, for the last 15 years, has been by far the best, and then there's kind of been Wade. I think even in the crossover period of Jordan and Kobe, Kobe was the best shooting guard in the competition, yeah. Yeah. too. Yeah. Different roles. Like, sure. You know, Kobe defined his role as, as a pure shooting guard. And, um, you know, the others are passing guards as well. Yeah. The, the all-star ballot kind of showed how strong the um, point guards are because assuming Kobe's going to miss the game, his stand-in, I think, will be... It was Steph Curry, Kobe, and then... I'm not sure who was just behind him. But the, in the East, you know, you've got two point guards, two really not offensively heavy point guards, both starting... Yeah, and John Wall and Kyle, Kyle Larry, who was the one who kind of bumped LeBron, uh, bumped Wade in the last moment. Sure, 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 sure. Um, okay, then you don't put Allen Iverson ahead of Dwayne Wade based on current form. Well, like all, all time. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm not about, hey, I haven't, hasn't been playing I, well lately. Iver, Iverson's <laughs> really been off. off, he, off, off touch. I, I haven't seen him in the stats for ages, to be honest. No, I, I would put Iverson ahead, but it's kind of tricky because Wade's got the rings. Reggie Miller. Yeah, he's there. Clyde Drexler? Definitely. Oh, yeah. Yeah? T-Mac? T-Mac's kind of tricky because he never really kind of fulfilled his potential. Never hit his stride, eh? Despite the fact that he like led the league in scoring for three or four years. Sure, sure, sure. He just never really did it Never had it that 10 the, years, eh? Yeah, and he, he didn't do the playoffs thing. He, he never won. Okay. Well, your rings are definitely part of the, you know, everyone, when people talk about the greatest players, they, they always bring up rings. Yeah. So, like, you know, is is rings a prerequisite for being one of the greatest, or is it just... I, I think you can get there without it, but it helps. Like, yeah. s- there's no denying Reggie Charles Miller, Barkley. Reggie Miller's probably the greatest player to play the game to not win a ring. Yeah. I, I think, Charles and Barkley, I think Barkley, Charles Barkley, yeah. Carl Malone, they're both guys that yeah. everyone considers top 50 players, but they never never won a championship. Yeah, and there's obviously plenty of players that won like 
Robert Horry, you're not going to say he's a top five player because yeah. he's got seven rings. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> big shot, Rob. Yeah. Mate, you, you, you're big, you don't get given a moniker. Sorry, Monkia. A monkey. You don't give a moniker, big shot, Rob, without, oh, you know. He, he's an all-time clutch performer, but he's not an all-time player. Yeah, yeah, sorry, uh, Izzy. Don't judge my English right now, okay? Uh, it's the Heineken. It was the Heineken talking. <laughs> that one Heineken. The yeah, well, that one Heineken. The lightweight champion of Whoa. New Zealand. And I tell you what, and, <laughs> And, and white guy Nate just threw it right back at, 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 at Eddie there right then. Yeah, yeah no, I'm going to punch him in the throat later on. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There's the brown. It's in the UFC hour. <laughs> it's a sporting lockdown. You have Dan, you have Red Scarf. Of course, we've got our JB, the ultimate right here. Nate, the white guy. That's your new, mon- That's your new moniker. That's your new I like that. Nate, I was going to say monkey. Guy. That's what he's done to me. <laughs> blue eyes, the blue eyes white guy. Uh, the, just a white guy. Uh, <laughs> Nate, okay, okay. Nate the white guy. And funny enough, very, very, very um, uh, into the know when it comes to uh, the NBA. Um, halfway through the season, coming up to the halfway point in the NBA season, who are you picking to win the East? Uh, Hawks. Hawks are Hawks, pretty. Hawks will come number one seed. I don't think they'll, they'll uh, go to the finals, but I think they'll be t- number one seed. Hawks looking pretty damn good. What about yeah, in the yeah. West? Uh, Warriors. Warriors are going to be on Ooh. pace to... They, they could push um, the Bulls all-time record at the current rate. I made a really big call last night at um, our late-night dining um, venue, and I predicted that the Oklahoma City Thunder are going to win the Did. NBA championship this year. Wow. Yeah, they are going, they are going to ha- they're going to go on a tear in a little bit, and oh. I can see them building to the tear. And I can see them winning the title. Everyone looked at me like crazy. Eat your burger, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 I can pick it. And I'm not even a Stephen Adams. I'm not a Stephen Adams fan. You know. Yeah. yeah. I don't. I don't understand this. This furor. I mean, I. I no. I shouldn't say. It. I understand. Yeah. Why the country is is going into a little bit of mayhem over Stephen Adams. However, I don't. I don't. I just. Yeah. I. You don't think it's just foot. No, I mean, yeah, he's, he's playing well and he's getting a lot of niggle and he's doing a lot of good things. Yeah. But I mean, the other day everyone's going on about his 20, his 20 um, rebounds. Uh, rebounds. He also had like five turnovers yeah. and yeah, yeah. he scored he's, four points or something <laughs> like that. You know? He's played well, but he's he's certainly not a top tier centre yet. No, yeah, he's sure. got the potential. In his second year in the league, I, I wouldn't yeah. say so. He, he's got the potential to be really good. He's got incredible like athleticism and, and he's massive. Do you think so? You think he's got the potential to be the best centre in the league? No, I don't think he could be the best. He he could very well do the kind of Tyson Chandler kind of mould player where he goes out, does the dirty work, gets rebounds and gets blocks. Sure, sure, sure. And the Thunder, he doesn't need to score, which is kind of a bonus. Okay. I think that's why he kind of is a good fit for them. But I think the tricky thing with the Western Conference is it's any really any of the eight teams that are going to make it could win. It's going to be come down to matchups. Like sure. I think if the Thunder come up real. against the Grizzlies, I think they would lose. Yeah, sure, Just sure. Just because sure. that's when like the Grizzlies have the best front court arguably in the league and that's kind of the Thunder's weakness. JB, who yeah. are you picking to win the East and the West? Well, um, I made a prediction, sorry, prediction um, earlier this season. I made getting, a prediction. I made a prediction um, earlier this year and uh, well last year and I said that it was going to be Mavs versus Bulls in the final and I still think both of those teams are on track to get to the playoffs. Um, not necessarily seed seed number one, but get there, go through the grind, and face each other in the final. Uh, I actually agree with that. I said that last night when we were having dinner. He did, he did indeed. Nice. Um, I just think, yeah, the Bulls, I think, will be two seed, probably. So the Mavs look like they're going to so be about four seed. Yeah. But I, I really don't think in the West, seeding's going to matter. It's really who gets in yeah. and then what the matchups like are. Like you say, they're all killers over there, so yeah. it's just which killer takes out which one and who, yeah. who's left at the end. Exactly. I can imagine that exactly what you mean. I know what you're talking about. It is the Sporting Lockdown. You have Dan Etty, Red Scarf, JB the Ultimate Rider, and of yep. course... Nate, the white guy, joining us. Yeah, We're going to talk a little bit of NFL Super Bowl preview coming up, and we're going to call Sport and Ball coming up soon. Until then, this is Kanye West right here. Best mercy there on the Sporting Lockdown with Dan, Etty, Red Scarf, and JB, the ultimate writer. It's good to have everybody along here. We're down at the tap room Sunday afternoon. Lots Yo. of sport going on this weekend, of course, and we've got, obviously, our main... Uh, item of the conversation come up in a little while, which will be the UFC Stockholm Gustafsson versus Rumble Johnson. It's going to be a great, great, great Hell of a fight. fight. Really is. We'll talk more about that very, very shortly. Uh, for anyone interested, uh, the Black Caps are 132 for two, and the 26th over in the match versus Sri Lanka coming out of the University Oval in Dunedin. Um, and also, of course, the Australian Open is on at the moment. So, lots of sport happening around. The world. I'm, um, and this is probably something which you two aren't so overly excited about, but I'm incredibly excited for the Cricket World Cup, which begins in about three weeks' time here in New Zealand and Australia. Uh, 
the, the, the World Cup here. The World Cup is here in New Zealand and Australia. It's a, it's a massive deal. Um, did you know, this is actually a fact, did you know that more people watch the Cricket World Cup final than the Football World Cup final? Well, yeah, you got, you know, India, the whole subcontinent, everyone like that. Uh, yeah, isn't there like three billion? Or there was something? more. There was, uh, One billion. And, and, that's, and that begs the question as to, as to when the real money is going to start pumping through cricket. Like, there's a lot of money in the IPL and things like that. But where is the real money? Because you're talking about probably the largest sporting market in the entire world. It's monopolized though, right? Yeah, sure it yeah. is. Yeah, of course it is. But, I mean... But every- that's where you're Rebel League, etc. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But... I mean, that was just full of cheats in the end, and yeah. I mean, Chris Cairns and, and and all the guys, Lou Vincent. I mean, yeah, all those diamond traders. The diamond, the cricket diamond <laughs> traders. Yeah, that's that's exactly what they were. So, the cricket World Cup is, is is here, and I would love it. And I'm I'm a massive Black Caps fan. I can sit there and watch cricket for days. Yeah, I can see. I'm starting to believe that the New Zealand cricket team can win the World Cup. I mean, if New Zealand wins the cricket World Cup, I think that will put a lot of faith. Back into people that don't really follow cricket. I mean, you yeah. have you, you either really like cricket or you just can't stand it. Just really hate it, otherwise. Just hate it with a passion. One of those games. It, it, it is one of those games, but I, I, I do hope that New Zealand does one because I mean, it's good for the country, but yep. it's really good for the sport because um, yeah, I really think that cricket can really get some some good followers if they um, win. Is it is it a big cup? Is it like or is it like the Rugby World Cup where it's like? Like the physical, cup? The, the, the physical <laughs> cup, the physical cup, like is, is it quite a big? Yeah, I don't know how that matters, but yeah, no, it's, it's, oh, it's, know, it's, it's bigger than the rugby world cup, but yeah, no, because no. this shit looks really small, eh? It looks small, <laughs> but it looks <laughs> really small when you put it on the hands of like massive of athletes, gigantic, though. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, like yeah. Richie McCaw looks like he's like strangling a baby. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh wow, he's like, he's like this. <laughs> You've never strangled a baby before? Here's the. Uh, oh wow, <laughs> here's a picture of the cricket world cup. If you want to see it? Oh, okay. Yeah, so, yep, I guess um, quite big. You say, yeah. I wonder if they're like pure gold. Uh, maybe. Yeah. I Cricket mean, with all that are, money. They're quite small, though. They are becoming athletes now uh, over the last, you know, five to ten years. They have become proper athletes now, See, whereas it, before they were just cricketers. Yeah, and I think the, 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 the thing I find very hard about cricket is, is it a test. Is it a test the one that's the longer? Five yeah, days. the five yeah, days. Yeah, the five-day test. I, I mean, if you're a fielder, and the ball is hardly ever coming out your way. What are, what is going through your head? Are you are you in the zone thinking about the game, or uh, mate? Like any like like, like any sport, yeah. these guys are just intently focused. Yeah, yeah. There is there is no doubt about how um, determined how focused they are. From my experience being in the field, you know, you're constantly like, walking. Coming from my experience oh, in the wow. field. And, uh, when I you played in the World Cup. <laughs> when uh, I was at our family <laughs> holiday at the uh, Parakai Beach. Like, and, uh, you know, you're constantly walking in with the bowler. You're giving people encouragement. You're trying to stay on your toes. You're you're trying to expect the ball every every single delivery. Oh, hey, wow. Who are you picking to win the World Cup, by the way, JB? I like, I constantly go with New Zealand just because, you know, patriotism. And there was a time when we almost won the World Cup. Um, you know, really? What? You, nah, we, semi-finals. Yeah, oh, okay. we, we've got good. a rich history in in cricket, just not when it matters. Yeah, but the team seems like they're sort of progressing quite nicely. I'm just watching them right now. Kane Williamson yeah. almost running out Ross Taylor's. The Black Caps 116 for two. Um, so, live action here, then 25th over, sorry, 117 for two. Would um, this be one of like New Zealand's best teams that they've ever had in a while? It's probably our best team since probably the early 90s, I'd say. Yeah, the Young Guns. Oh, wow, the young, good. the Young Guns. Good for that, you. That was in New that's Zealand really as well. That was New Zealand, Australia. Paddy Great Batch, all that. I remember Ron the. Latham. I remember the opening match of the Cricket World Cup versus Australia. Eden Park, Martin Crow, the hundred. Oh wow! The crowd running on the field. Yeah. It was. It was yeah. pretty epic. People and going nuts. And then bowling Australia all out. So that was the glory days of New Zealand one day cricket. Yeah, no. Nah. It was it was a really really good time of cricket, and then of course the mid eighties of New Zealand cricket, the Hadleys, the Coneys, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Richard Hadley, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 he was a, f- a fast bowler. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there we go. I One remember cricket when yeah, I remember when cricket when Martin Crow had hair, and then uh, wow. and then wow. he didn't have hair, and, and then, then he had hair again. Then he started doing some late night ads, and then, oh, there you go. <laughs> and all fairness, yeah, but uh, actually. Yeah, we, big shout out to Martin Croak, obviously, yeah. who's he's, um, dude, very, he's he? very, very ill at the moment. Oh, yeah, really? exactly. He's got, yeah. he's, he's got lymphoma cancer. A lot of oh, support really going sad. out to Martin Croak. There's a, yeah. lot of, a lot of the community are getting around Martin Croak at the moment. He's a good dude. They hey. haven't said, uh, and they haven't announced that, that it's terminal or anything like that, yeah. but 
the undertones of a lot of the conversations and things. So, so it's, it's not like Magic Johnson who got AIDS and he didn't get AIDS. He had oh, HIV. He has, well, yeah, okay. But he had, like, it's like Magic, know, Magic Johnson's got money. He's like, don't worry, we'll, you'll live forever. Yeah, 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 yeah hard up. <laughs> That's like he's like. When nah, you reach eighty four, we send you to a farm with a whole bunch of other celebrities. <laughs> they live forever. We black actors. <laughs> Elvis man. Presley, Bob Marley, Walt <laughs> Disney. They're all there. Yeah, Tupac, Biggie. Yeah. No, 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 Tupac's definitely dead. <laughs> <laughs> Tupac and Chris Benoit. Uh, oh, wow. Just, and Tupac and Chris Benoit are officially dead. Hey, oh. in eight days' time, Super Bowl. Who are you picking for Super Bowl, boys? Um, yeah, it's going with C- Seattle. Um, to be honest, I haven't really watched um, many games this year. And that's just due to my team just being really shit, to be honest. Um, but I really do think that... Um, they got they got a really strong running game. Obviously, with Lynchaw just tearing it up at the moment, and um, you know their the last year's winners, aren't they? Yeah, they know they won it last year. So okay, so, so you got the Seahawks versus yeah, the Patriots. Patriots. Seattle won last year. So you got New England versus Seattle Seahawks. JB, talk me through this drama around these deflated balls. Well, um, you know there has been a lot of drama about it. Um, deflated balls. Talking about last weekend's game. So Tom Brady has come under a lot of scrutiny just recently, obviously, because it's been spoken about that he knew about these balls. They, he knew about the scandal that had happened there. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And because Tom Brady, of course, his legacy as probably one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Dead in a hot, and a hot wife, too. And we've, we've got a jersey of his that we're sitting right beside here. down. At the we back. might have to take it down if, if we find out that he's a liar. Well, well you, is he going to be like Lance Armstrong where we're like, oh, well, we still like you anyway. Yeah, so a lot of the talk, of course, online in particular, has been really been sparked up this week over Tom Brady's legacy and whether or not his reputation will be will be, will be um, uh, damaged over this because he's had a pretty pretty solid image throughout the last what ten years of his career. And, I mean, he's been untouchable. He's been probably one of the top quarterbacks. He's played for a very very dominant team within the division. He yeah. is the quarterback's quarterback. Well, he's synonymous with um, with being a quarterback. You know, a lot of people say Tom Brady. People know it's up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, sorry, I'm just looking at this uh, report about the, um, Tom Brady, and it looks like he's saying that he seems he's saying that um, everything was all good. That he doesn't he hasn't been cheating. It says the league has yet to contact him about the def. Okay, I don't even want to pronou- pronounce that word, but defligate. And he reiterates what? he has no knowledge of any wrongdoing. Deflate gate. Deflate gate. Like, like Why is everyone like, <laughs> honestly? Deflate gate. Deflate gate. Yeah. yeah. Deflate. So, Deflate. Do you notice how confident I was when I said it too? <laughs> hey, don't. Hey, we. Hey, we are building tomorrow's future. <laughs> shout out, so, to shut up. So, uh, so just so everyone is aware, if you know, re- don't, don't quite know what happened here, I really um, hate every my single right now, every right. single ball has to have a certain psi yeah. pressure. Um, it should be between twelve point five to thirteen point five pounds per square inch or psi. Um, Brady likes them at twelve point five, and part of the reason is just because of the way that they travel and all that sort of thing, but. ESPN came out earlier in the week and they said that 11 of the 12 balls provided by the Patriots were two pounds under the minimum when measured at half time. Uh-huh. Um, do, have you been following this at all, Nathan? Uh, a little bit. Enough to kind of know roughly what happened. So break it down for everyone. Uh, from what I understand was the ball was underinflated, which essentially makes it easier to catch. Um, and I'm not sure whether or not like which of the two quarterbacks has a preference for like Underinflated, overinflated. Tom really Brady good. prefers to have a have a have a, um, a lighter ball. Oh, okay. Oh, so wow. yeah, it kind of makes sense in terms of potential, whether you want to call it cheating or like fixing. Mm. Sure. And do you believe Tom when Tom Brady said that he knew nothing about it? I wouldn't be surprised because if it's going to come that far down to the players, you're putting a lot of like pressure on the players to keep quiet about it. While if you just keep it in the front office or whoever was doing the dodgy stuff, if it stays with just them, it kind of makes it. A little bit easier to keep under wraps. Yeah. Can you do me a favor? Can you <coughs> pronounce what that says right there? <laughs> wow. It's deflate gate. Okay, we're just checking. <laughs> That's why that he's Itty 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 called us the white Itty was like, um, if, I, if I, and then you know what we call it, deflate gate. Uh, hey, <laughs> oh, uh, you shut it's, up. It's a play on obviously Watergate and also yeah. Spygate, which happens with the Patriots. Like, That's right. Yeah. It's going to be almost 10 years ago now. See? This is why we See? have the local white yeah, guy. Thank you, Nathan the white guy. Sorry, Oxford Dictionary. <laughs> We're down at the tap room. <laughs> it is Sunday afternoon. Cricket on. We've got UFC on this afternoon. Gustafsson versus Rumble. We've got the Sprawl and Brawl podcast coming up in a few moments. Um, 
anything else that we need to cover off sporting wise? I mean, oh, oh, we sorry, who are you picking? Who are you picking for the sport for the Super Bowl? Very quickly, uh, Seahawks. Who are you picking for the Super Bowl? New England. I'm also picking the Patriots there to pick it up. Um, Ooh. Yeah. Maybe we should have a little bet, a little wager. All right. How about this? Nah, I don't want to bet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, could, I, I, had a, I could see your mind ticking over. I was like, I had a really me. disgusting bet lined up too. Like you would have just cringed at it. Oh, well, we have we do have a lot of disgusting conversations. So probably wouldn't really surprise <laughs> me knowing knowing us. Something about mopping the toilets at the tap room, was it? With your tongue. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> with, with your tongue. Hey, NRL nines next weekend. Um, yeah, a few issues over the football field that's going to be used at Eden Park. Oh, really? Um, yeah. So a lot of the team saying it's going to be too. Um, uh, uh, too too hard. It's going to be a very hard, fast track. Too hard. They don't want any injuries. Awesome, Some man. teams aren't sending over any any um, stars. top stars. top stars. And part of the and part of the reason that the the, the track is like that was because originally the ground was booked for cricket World Cup, uh, and oh, so the ground has to be prepared yeah. for cricket. Of course. Um, and they and they fast. actually yeah and they came to an agreement there to actually to still have the nines there, but adjust some of the field treatments and that leading into the first cricket World Cup game at Eden Park. Yeah. Um, but it should be a great weekend. Auckland City just absolutely just goes off. It's it's loads of fun. Mm. Everyone has the a good tap time. Room will definitely be going off. That's all we're hoping. Seventy four Wyndham Street, the tap room. Um, great specials, after work drinks, everything down here. Functions, down here. anything you want to know, get on Facebook. Contact Russell Diaz, the local pimp. People who like to live a bit <laughs> wild. There's some shisha going on. A little bit of everything down at the tap room Sunday afternoon. We're going to be talking uh, MMA and combat sports in a little bit, including a few other things which we haven't put up on the board, which we're going to have get into in a little while. We've got a special guest, Israel Adesanya, coming yep. in, who was the yep. king of the ring in what division? Bender. Middleweight. Middleweight. Middle 80, 84, 86 kg. Middleweight. Yep. King of the Ring, a badass man. He's going to be with us very, very shortly. And Etty's going to play Pimp Slap with him. So that is all going to be happening uh, on I camera. We're going to get yep. the white guy. A, a oh, yeah. to get hey, the he's, guy. he's played his part. He's done his yeah. expertise he's for the day. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, what we'll do is we'll put, we'll put two games in the hat. We'll either play Pimp Slap or you'll play Russian Egg Roulette. So we'll do that with him <laughs> in a little <laughs> while. Uh, I'm going to go straight to work from here. Uh, you'll be, you'll <laughs> be fine. More of a oh, egg, and I see him walking in right now. So, yep. It is the podcast. It is Spall and Brawl. Come up in a little while. This is the Sporting Lockdown, Dan Etty Red Scarf. And, of course, we're joined by today, JB, the ultimate rider. Yep. And, of course, Nate, the white guy. Plenty of other stuff coming up in just a little while. We're going to have a few drinks. We're going to play some music. And Spall and Brawl will be coming at you live right here on MixLR, courtesy of the Sports Fan Network, here down at the Tap Room, 74 Wyndham Street. Awesome to have you listening to us. And those that are podcasting us and have downloaded the show, keep downloading us. Get all your information, of course, as well. Uh, the Ultimate Rider. Follow them on Facebook and Twitter. It's all set, ready to go. Sprawl and Brawl coming up in just a little while. It's a pleasure having you along, talking some sport. We've got some new guests that are going to join us next week as well. So good to have you here. This is Future right here.